Okay, so 10.3 is called Using Chords. Um, there is, in the description, there's a link to this note-taking guide if you want to download it and print it. Um, okay, so um, as we already discussed in the previous sections, if you take any two points on a circle and connect them with a line segment, this is called a chord. Okay, and then um, if you take part of a circle, so say I connect those two same two points um, like this with just that, that piece of the circle there, this is called an arc. So it's really important that you remember the difference between a chord and an arc. They often get confused. Um, also this uh, section, there's a lot of relationships between arcs and chords and that's really what this section is about. Um, okay, so the first um, um, of those relationships is the congruent corresponding chords theorem. Okay, this is going to be an if and only if theorem. So that means it's going to work both ways, right? This is a biconditional, so I'm, I'm going to be able to flip this around and it will still work. Okay, so um, I'm going to draw two chords on my first circle that are congruent. Okay, I'm just going to say that those two are congruent. Let's call this, I didn't leave myself much room there, but my first chord's A, B, and the second one can be C, D. Okay, so if um, within one circle, if I've got two congruent chords, then if, if I redraw those chords, I'm not going to put in the little dashes, but I'm going to redraw the chords. Then the uh, arcs that those chords cut out are also going to be congruent. So these related arcs are congruent as well. Okay? So yeah, I could flip this picture around. So if you got two congruent chords, you got two congruent arcs, or if you have two congruent arcs, then you got two congruent chords that are, are related. Okay? Um, all right, moving on. Next up is the perpendicular chord bisector theorem. Okay? So um, this one is gonna be an if-then statement. Okay. We've got the uh, converse of it right below, but um, so it's not going to be an if and only if. Um, we won't be able to, to write it like that. Okay, um, so um, this time I've got the center of the circle marked, so I'm going to draw in a diameter. So just a, a chord that goes through the uh, center of the circle. I'll make that a little bigger there. Okay, so um, if this diameter by, uh, is as perpendicular to a chord, so I'm going to draw in a chord, something like this, and I'm just going to say that that's at a right angle, okay? So the diameter is perpendicular to that chord, okay? Let me redraw the picture. I'm going to put the same stuff in over here. Okay, so I've still got a diameter that's, uh, that's perpendicular to a chord. Well, then it's going to do two things. It's going to bisect the chord, like so, and it's also going to bisect the related arc. So I could say this is also true. Okay. Okay. So um, next up is the converse of that. And it's not quite just flipping around the picture. Um, so you'll notice on the first picture here, this is, is going to be an if and only, or sorry, an if then statement. But you notice on that first circle, I don't have the center drawn in, okay? So I'm going to recreate this drawing except without the center marked. So I'm going to draw in, um, uh, it's going to end up being a diameter, but it's not yet. Okay, I'm going to draw this. I'm going to put in the right angle. I'm going to put in these markings, okay? So this is saying if I have a chord that bisects, um, another chord and it's perpendicular to it um, or it, it, it cuts the, uh, the arc into congruent parts and it's perpendicular. Well if that happens then the, this chord has to be a diameter. Okay, So I'm not going to draw the whole picture again over here. I'm just going to draw this piece. But uh, yeah, the, uh, what happens in this one, it's a diameter. it has to go through the center of the circle if it's going to cut those um, chords and arcs at a right angle like that, if it's going to cut them in half like that. OK. 
Okay. And then last one on this page is the equidistant chords theorem. This is another if and only if. Okay. Um, so I'm going to draw two congruent chords, kind of like we did on that first theorem. I've got two congruent chords there in the same circle. Um, if you've got two congruent chords, that means they're going to be equidistant from the center. So they're going to be the same distance from the center of the circle. Okay, so I'm going to draw the two chords again without the markings this time. But I want to show that the distance from this chord to the center is the same as the distance from this chord to the center. Okay, so the way I'm going to represent that distance, this is the shortest possible distance. So it's going to have to be the perpendicular distance. Okay, so there's the distance from this line to the center. And then same thing over here. I'm going to draw a perpendicular line segment. So those distances are both, um, are both congruent like that. So in other words, the chords are equidistant from the center. Equidistant just means equal distance, right? Okay, and that's the last of the theorems. So let's try some examples on the next page. Okay, I'm going to put in some given info here. So I'm going to do the given info with black pen. So let's see, um, this can be 11x. This is supposed to be the length of that arc. And then 70 plus x is the length of this arc. OK, and we're going to solve this for x. So I'm going to use those theorems from the previous page. OK, so I'm thinking about this situation. All right, I've got a diameter, and it's perpendicular to um, that chord. So that means I know that two things are true. I know it's going to cut the chord in half. And it's also going to cut the arc in half. It's going to bisect the arc. Okay, so I don't really need the chords there, but the uh, yeah. Now I can say 11x equals 70 plus x. And I can solve that pretty quickly. I'm going to subtract x from both sides and divide by 10. And I should check the directions. Yeah, I'm solving for x, so I am done. Okay. All right. So, yeah, on, with these theorems, it's not really that important that you memorize the names of the theorems, as long as you know how to use them. Um, there's Most of the problems are, are these kinds where you're solving for something. Um, so it's more important to apply them. It's not bad to know the names, but it's not totally crucial. We're not going to be doing proofs with these. Um, Okay, so next up, um, all right, so let me put in my given info. Um, so this is going to be 12 and this will 2. So I didn't mean to put in the red markings, but hey, it's pretty obvious that those are congruent. They're both 12. Um, and then I'm going to have um, this. It's a little hard to draw in there, but that whole distance is going to be 7x minus 3, the length of that chord. And then the length of the other chord on the other side is going to be 5x plus 7. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of things here. First, we're going to solve for x. So I'm looking at this problem, um, and I'm thinking, oh, both of these chords are the same distance from the center. They're equidistant from the center. And that means that the chords themselves are going to be congruent. So that means 5x plus 7 is going to equal 7x minus 3. Okay. So I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. I'll add 3. And then divide by 2. And x equals 5. Okay. Um, so now let's find the length of, of LM. Um, so this should have, I, I just, I'm noticing I made a mistake here. This says arc LM, but I want this to be um, 
segment LM. I want it to be the chord LM, not the arc, okay? Um, so let's find the length of chord LM. Um, so it's just the length of this, this, uh, this line segment. So all I have to do is plug in the x value into 7x minus 3. So x was 5. 35 minus 3 is going to come out to 32. So there's the length of the chord. And you could try it out. The other chord should also come out to 32. Um, okay, and then the last thing is to find the length of the radius, okay? So this one is a little tricky. So, a um, couple things I want to do. Um, so, if you think about, th there's just a little line segment here, but if you extended it, there would be a diameter, right, that went through, that went right along there and continued to both sides of the um, of the um, of the circle. So I'm not going to draw it in because it's going to get a little messy. But since this is a di this would be a diameter if I extended that, and it's perpendicular to that orange segment, that means that these two segments are going to be congruent. It's going to cut that cord in half. Okay. Now we already figured out that the length of that cord was um, 32, right, from part B. So if that's 32, well, that means I've got 16 here and 16 here since it's bisected, okay? All right, so I'm finding the length of the radius. Let me separate this from the next problem. So finding the length of the radius. Well, there isn't a radius drawn in this picture yet, okay? Remember, the radius is just the length from, um, from the center to any point on the circle, okay? So I could put in a radius, say, over here. That would be a radius. But that's not really gonna help me. I wanna put it in a convenient place, okay? So what I'm gonna do is create a right triangle. So I'm gonna put my radius like this, okay? So now when I look at this, um, this right triangle that I got here, I can solve for r because I've got two of the three sides of a right triangle, and that means I can use the Pythagorean theorem, okay? So, um, um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So, um, r would be the c, so 12 squared plus 16 squared equals r squared, okay? Um, and then I've got 144 plus 256, okay? Um, that's going to come out to 400 for r squared. So the radius is going to be the square root of 400. And that's going to come out to exactly 20. OK. So that one's a little tricky because you have to realize that you need a, the length of that chord and then to cut it in half. And then you build yourself a right triangle using the radius, OK? Pretty much any time you're looking for the radius, see if you can put the radius in a convenient place where it's going to form a right triangle. OK, last problem. Um, I'm going to put the given info in, and then maybe you want to try this. Uh, maybe you want to try it, pause the video. Um, so given info, both those chords have a length of 24. Um, this is going to be 3x, and this is going to be 7x minus 12, okay? So go ahead, pause the video, try it out. Um, I'm going to work through it, okay? So first off, solving for x. So both the chords are congruent. They're both 24, and that means they're going to be equidistant from the center of the circle. So 3x is going to equal 7x minus 12. Okay. Then I'll, uh, I'll subtract 7x from both sides and divide by negative 4. So x equals 3. Okay. Um, part B, I'm finding the length of the radius. Let me zoom in. So, um, okay. So um, I want to build myself a right triangle. It doesn't really matter where you can you can make your radius go to point H or point G or point F or point E. It doesn't really matter. Any of those would be fine. I'm going to put mine right here. 
Okay, so here's my radius. Okay, um, so I want to um, solve for um, this side. I can do that now because I know that x is 3. So then I've got 21 minus 12, which would be 9. Okay, so this side is 9. And then this chord is going to be split in half because th this line segment would be part of a diameter. And it's perpendicular, this chord, so that means that this piece here would be 12. And, and so would this piece, right? It's just cutting that 24 in half, okay? And then I got my right angle right there. So now I've got what I need for Pythagorean theorem over here. So, um, yeah, 9 squared plus 12 squared is going to equal r squared. Okay, 81 plus 40, 144 is 225. Take the square root. Okay, and technically when you take the square root of the whole equation, there's a positive and a negative root, but it wouldn't make sense to have a negative radius because it's the length of a, uh, of a line segment. So I'm just using the positive root there. And that's it. All right, thanks very much. I'll see you next time.